Good morning. Welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on the Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is all judgment is self-judgment. And uh, we're going to explore this sort of cryptic connection. Uh, but before we get started, let's take a couple minutes to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together and vigorously rub those hands together. Feel all the sensations, the friction, the temperature, the pressure. And when you stop rubbing them together, feel that tickling and tingling and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it's great to be here with you. And uh, today we're talking about judgment and how all judgment is self-judgment. So um, what's the dynamic at play? in this in this sort of very interesting notion um i was talking with a client yesterday who was talking about the quality of their relationship and how they weren't feeling like their needs were being met good morning robin welcome so good to have you here with us this morning. It's um, We're talking about all judgment is self-judgment. And um, so the, the conversation with this client was about how their partner wasn't really showing up for them. And, and what came out of the conversation is that the partner had expressed feelings of of the client trying to control them. Good morning, good morning, Rosalind. Welcome. So good to have you here with us. Uh, Robin says, "Oh boy, <laughs> all judgment is self judgment." <laughs> so when we when we're judging others, we get to look at what's behind that. So in order to judge. We have an idea of how things should be, right? Because what is judgment? Judgment is a um, comparison of an expectation or desire against what is apparently so. So um, judgment is saying, well, I have, you should be doing this, that, or the other thing, or you should be acting in a different way. You should be responding differently, right? And so when we turn the lens back upon ourselves, what we will discover is either we are working really hard to do all those things that we're accusing somebody else of not doing, or <clears throat> we're not, we're falling short of all those things. Uh, we're falling short of being the way that we think we should be 
Robin says, okay, I think I'm safe. <laughs> yeah, get into a comfortable, safe place. Um, this isn't about accusing. This is about exposing these insidious dynamics that we live through. You know, it's not about blame because this isn't about giving you anybody, any of us more fuel to judge ourselves. That's not what this is about. This is about recognizing that um, we can be brutally, brutally harsh on ourselves. And um, then we expand that out into the world. You know, it's like um, the world's not meeting my expectations. So the world's wrong, you know, uh, it, and therefore I'm going to be miserable. <laughs> I'm going to go eat worms. <laughs> so um, it's so it's so interesting how this whole thing works. The things that we criticize in others are the things that we criticize in ourselves. Now, how is that the case? Well, the things we criticize in ourselves are things we're really highly attuned to. And when we're really highly attuned to those things in ourselves, what we're going to do is we're going to see it in the world around us. It's like when you when you are looking for a car, for instance, and there's a certain kind of car that you're interested in, then all of a sudden you keep you start seeing a ton of those cars on the road. Now the question is, are there more of those cars on the road than there used to be, or are you just tuned in to recognizing them? Right? If if you're super tuned in to a certain pattern you're going to see that pattern everywhere it's like when when the only tool you have is a hammer everything else is a nail you know you just look for the things that you're tuned into so it was very very interesting in this conversation with this person to discover, you know, here there were all these judgments about their partner not measuring up. And what, what showed up is that they were being really judgmental around their partner. Um, lots and lots and lots of judgments, like the, the partner wasn't doing this right or doing that right. And and I said, well, what would it be like to be on the receiving end of all that judgment? And um, the emotions that came up is, well, I would feel like a failure. I would feel like it wouldn't matter how much I try. I can't ever get it right. And um, I would feel resigned. And what happened in our conversation is that I then asked, are any of these feelings familiar? Like, are these feelings you feel? And what came up was this person was so deeply, deeply, deeply judgmental of themselves that like they, they said they don't even feel like they can brush their teeth well enough, for instance, you know, like they should have brushed longer or brushed different somehow. And so there's this predisposition, especially, especially when we're challenged by circumstance, especially when we don't feel safe, to your point, Robin, um, when we don't feel safe, we become, we, we, we retreat to or um, resort to really familiar patterns as toxic as they may be. 
So if we've grown up in an environment where we've been judged, we've learned to judge. We've learned to judge ourselves and we've learned to judge others. And we've also learned to, um, to develop a worldview that says, this is how the world should be. Now, where does that come from? Who says? Who says that the world should be a certain way or that people should be a certain way? And, and coming from those expectations, that's where we get a space of great disappointment right? Because we're trying to impose these manufactured expectations on other people, on an environment, and it's a recipe for upset. It's a recipe for upset. Now, when we're in relationship, what we are hoping for is love and acceptance, right? How can we expect to receive love and acceptance when what we're expressing is judgment and, and we're projecting that someone else is inadequate? is not meeting our expectations, is not meeting our judgment, is not meeting our standard. They should be different. And, and the thing is that we rarely recognize that this, this lens of judgment that we're projecting on others is actually something that we're imposing on ourselves because there are certain standards that we set that we're trying to live up to. And we may, may not be doing such a great job of living up to those standards. And it doesn't mean that the standards are right and we're wrong. What it, it may mean that those standards are, are not our own standards. It may mean that those standards are a fabrication that is based in La La Land that is really, are really, really destructive. It, it was so interesting. The same person said, you know, I, I, I can't even keep my office clean the way I should. And I thought, well, I said, Who taught you, who told you how you should keep an office clean? Like there's a, there's a law written somewhere about how your office should be kept. You know, some people thrive in, in having everything everywhere so that they can see it, you know, right. And to somebody else that could be horrifying because they, need everything ordered and and organized in a in a different way but who said there's a way to keep your office clean and it's it's that's actually a valuable question like who said these standards are the standards because reality typically doesn't measure up to whatever those standards are. Because those standards are a um, construct. Now, there are certain circumstances where there are standards that are required, right? Like if you're working on a nuclear power plant, not my favorite topic, but you better have standards of excellence to be checking off all the boxes that's a particular circumstance you know and there may be standards that 
are mutually set in a relationship to say, you know, these, these are our aspirations. This is where there's a difference between goal and, and intention. You know, because goals are pretty much black and white. You either make it or you don't. Whereas when you have an intention, it's it's more alive. You get to recommit. You get to redefine. You get to reshape it. You get to breathe with it. But if we notice the judgments that we make on ourselves, and then we make judgments about on ourselves about making judgments, right? Like, I'm not measuring up to this manufactured standard that exists out in the ether somewhere to torment me. <laughs> you know, like, what's up with this judgment stuff? You know, there are, there are things that we all do that we don't delight in having done. There's this notion of perfection. There's this notion of coloring in between the narrow lines in order to get it right. Like there's a right way and a wrong way. And of course, there are certain parameters. You know, there are certain guidelines that certain things are not okay. And there are exceptions, even with those guidelines. But judgment doesn't beget love and affection. If I'm coming to you with all kinds of judgment, are you are you experiencing love from me? Are you experiencing my acceptance? Are you experiencing my invitation to love? My judgment that I make of myself and that I make of you serves to separate me from myself and from you. So I just want to mention, if you guys are writing comments and I'm not responding, it's because I don't see them. So if you want to make sure that I respond to your comments, please go to either the Enlightened World Network Facebook page or the Enlightened World Network YouTube channel. And if you put in comments, I'll respond to them. But this is, a, this is an intense topic. Because we are taught, <clears throat> we are taught to judge ourselves and to judge others. When we're judged as children, we are taught that that's how we're to treat ourselves. If we're not measuring up, that's what we're taught, that we're not measuring up. We're going to keep judging. And there's all these standards. And the thing is that the standards most often are not defined. And when they are defined, they're not even, they're not usually mutually agreed upon. You know, it's not mutual agreement to say, okay, um, this is these are these are um, criteria or actions or um, contexts that I'm willing to commit to and intend aim toward. We don't typically have those agreements. Typically those judgments, those expectations are imposed upon us without our permission even, without our agreement, without 
are even knowing about it a lot of times. So someone has an expectation and we somehow breach that expectation and all of a sudden we're on the we're on the dark side, you know, we're on the short end of the stick because we didn't meet some kind of expectation that we didn't we didn't even know existed. Isn't it crazy? I mean, when you really look at it, it's it's recipe for insanity, right? Like a whole box, of, a whole big box of crazy there. So it's it's so interesting, and uh, and I'm going to extrapolate this to a conversation with another client too, where they were experiencing deep frustration at the um I don't know the right word here but I'm going to say diversions that would show up in life as they were trying to do something something would happen and they'd have to do something else to be able to get to the place where they could do what they were wanting to do so um they were getting super frustrated because all they wanted to do was get the thing done. And so we got into a conversation about doing versus being. And this judgment stuff is taking us away from beingness. So Robin says, well, I, I need to know, is it judgment when you see a different pattern in your partner's activity and you bring it to their attention? relationship situations well i guess i guess that's a good that's a great question robin because i guess it's how you bring that to their attention you know it's like if you're noticing a pattern are you are you saying hey you're doing this different or i'm wondering I'm noticing this or um, it seems like that or um, how are you doing about, I mean, it, it depends on the attitude you bring to it because if you're bringing judgment, that's a separator, you know, that's a polarizer, right? And I'm, I'm not saying that we're going to be able to eliminate judgment nor am i saying we should but i am saying that we get to be aware of the underlying dynamic good morning good morning isabel so good to have you joining us it's been a while welcome welcome so roslyn says judging does it take others to validate the judgment like wanting the other person to see it from your perspective so that's such an interesting conversation. Um, I have a dear friend who um, I have been, who, who has a very, very strong perspective around something that I don't st share the same perspective around. And they want me to change my perspective um, due to their view of this whole thing that I don't share. And they're so determined to change my perspective. And the thing is, I recognize why they have the perspective that they have which to me seems misguided to begin with. Um, it's, you know, I don't share the same foundational uh, perception. And it was, it's such an interesting dynamic because they were like 
on a mission, even stated that their mission was to change my mind. And I was like, dude, give it a rest. Give it a rest. Give me the respect to be able to make my own determination. And, and you know, the, it, it, after a point, it felt like they were really bullying me. Like I felt violated and disregarded and disrespected when I said, just stop. You know, that, that there was no stopping. And, and so there's, this is, this is the experience of projecting judgment onto another. It's, um, Isabel says, this is what's happening mostly in our days. Exactly. We're judging people. So what was really, really, really amazing is this same person who was um, experiencing this or, or embroiled in this pattern of judgment had created an incredible forum for people from all different ex extremes and the whole spectrum of of thought around politics had created this amazing forum for people to be able to communicate across these boundaries, across the judgments. And so there's this beautiful, bigger pattern at play here, you know, where we get, we, we, we work on things on so many levels, right? And we can see the dynamics in a bigger context outside ourselves. But when it comes to our internal dynamics, we have so much pain in history. You know, we have, we have so much um, such deeply embedded patterns. that um, we, we really get to be gracious with ourselves, be generous with ourselves. And hopefully by being generous with ourselves, we can be generous with others. Maybe we start by being generous with others and then we can be more generous with ourselves. You know, when when we're looking to heal the world, the things we're looking to heal are the things that need healing in ourselves. Very, very, very much deeply so. So Robin says, everyone has an opinion. The foundation of a person is from their fruit they have surrounded themselves with along their journey. And also with by what we've been shaped by in our upbringing. You know, we are, we are taught how to view ourselves, how to view others, how to view the world. We are taught to be violent, emotionally violent to ourselves or emotionally compassionate or impatient or judgmental. We, these are learned patterns and we get to hopefully in our evolution, in our um, awakening, we get to become more conscious of these patterns and we get to maybe unravel them, maybe heal them, maybe gain new perspectives that shift our experience of being around these patterns that enables us to release them and, and to provide ourselves and others with the compassion and care that we so yearn for. 
And so when we find ourselves in a place of judgment, let's look at ourselves when we're judging another. Let's look at ourselves and how we're judging ourselves. And when we turn that lens back on ourselves, let's, let's see what might be available, what, what wounds we may be able to heal. So there's, there's such a richness available to us when we recognize that we project our internal experience outward. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up for this morning. So I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. And I invite you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network, EWN One with the Earth, Enlightened World Living. And Robin says, a child that lives with this learns this. A child that lives with that learns that. It's entirely true. You know, we are imprinted with these patterns that we get to then spend a lifetime to discover and unfurl and redesign in a more conscious and deliberate way if we take the challenge to do so. So with that, so, so, so much love to you. I appreciate you and your willingness to dive into these often uncomfortable topics and be willing to explore new possibilities. Um, it enriches my life deeply to be able to share with you in this way. And I'm so grateful to you for that. So much love to you. Until next time, I hope I see you again here really, really soon.